Hi, welcome back to CVEN305. Today I'm going to show how to do a problem in which there are uh, multiple beams which are all under tension or compression, that is uniaxial members which are connected together by a rigid member. This is usually a hard problem for most students because there are all these sign issues and so on. So what I want to do is to show you an example where all of these things are clearly marked out and shown how to work the problem without too much trouble. This requires you to pay attention to the signs and to pay attention to how we draw free body diagrams, how we, how we put axis and so on because that's really vital to making sure that your calculations are simple. Okay, So this is kind of hard. I mean, it will take some time for you to figure out how this works. So let's start. The problem says we have a, we have a system in which uh, the, there is one link that is this guy which is made of brass. Okay, this guy is made of brass, this guy is made of steel and I am applying a force here and the maximum deflection allowed is 0 0.35 inches, sorry, millimeters and the question is how much force can I apply if the maximum deflection is 0.35 millimeters. So this is an example where we, are, where we do all three things, we look at uh, the equations of equilibrium we look at the constitutive equations, the material properties and so on. And the third thing is we look at uh, compatibility or constraint setups. Okay, So we are going to look at all three of them. The way we are going to do it is by going through a very systematic procedure to sort this out. So I am going to put this picture in the corner so that uh, we can always uh, refer to it and see what figure we are drawing. So the first step to this is to draw a free body diagram. Now many people when they draw free body diagrams uh, they are sloppy because they are not careful about it. So first thing to do please remember so this is a this is a process uh, for drawing a free body diagram you have to isolate the system by drawing system boundary. This you can do directly on the figure. What I mean by that is I am going to cut this system like this. This is my system. It's always a good idea to draw a system and isolate it. And I want you to notice that there are two places where we are cutting. Sorry. There is a place where we are cutting here and there is a place where we are cutting there. Can you see that? So there will be forces in the places where we cut. So I'm going to draw the free body diagram of the of this region, the thing that's inside. Okay. So second step, I'm going to draw this free body diagram. Now we start looking at uh, units and things like that. So before we draw the free body diagram, always assign axis, and you can assign axis whichever way you like. In our case, we are expecting everything to deflect downwards, right? So I'm going to put an axis and I'm going to pick some point on the ground to put an axis. So I'm going to put an axis here. You can choose wherever you like, but please mark the axis. This will help us sort out which way we are drawing things, okay? Now comes the critical thing. Yes, I drew the axis directly on the figure. Yes, I drew the outline on the figure, but please do not draw the forces on the figure. Um, as a matter of policy in my class, I will not accept that as a free body diagram. As a matter of proper uh, free body diagram, that's why it's called a free body. It should be floating. Okay, It cannot be connected to anything. It's unconnected. Right now the body is connected here and here. So I'm going to make it unconnected by redrawing the free body diagram. That's an essential step. So please remember, I'm going to draw the free body diagram here. So this is the I'm going to draw it kind of large. So the bar ABC is here. And then here is the portion of the bar. And I have to draw forces here. And then here is another portion of the bar. So the force here is F, sorry, P. So the, the two unknown forces, this will be called TBD and this will be called TC. 
CE. Sorry, FBE, FCE. Okay, so the notation is very simple. BD refers to the bar that goes from B towards D, and the and CE refers to the bar that goes from C towards E. And our first notation is the following. Draw internal forces pointing away from cut section. This is the positive sense. So we are automatically assume, in other words, we are going to assume, assume that all bars are pulling and not pushing. We will take care of the signs in the end, but that is our first notation. Okay. Now immediately after you have drawn the free body diagram, we are ready to sum all the forces and on this figure, I am going to redraw the axis so that we know which axis we are talking about. The point D is there and this is X, that is Y. Now I am going to do the equations of equilibrium. So we are now at the stage to draw equilibrium equations. which tell us that and I am going to do the equations of equilibrium by taking moments only. So just to show you that that is that's actually an easy way to do. So I am going to take summation of moments around point C going um, clockwise positive, sorry counterclockwise positive and this will give me P times, so remember this is 125, this is 225. So it will give me P times 350 equals TBD times 225 which implies TBD equals 14 over 9P. If I take moments around the point B going counterclockwise positive you will get P times 125 equal to F, sorry not it should not be T, it should be F, F C E times 225 which implies F C E equals 5 over 9 P. And you might be wondering, well how come I took two moments? What happened to the summation of forces? Just to check if you do summation of all the forces uh, vertical positive you will get minus p plus 14 over 9p minus 5 over 9p is automatically equal to 0. So I check. We have already enforced equations of uh, uh, the summation of forces by doing two summation of moments. So I want you to understand that the maximum you can get out of a free body diagram is three equations summation of forces in the x summation of forces in the y or summation of summation of moments the trick to do is that you can take three moments maximum okay per planar free body diagram okay very good so we did that then we are now at the stage where we are going to do material analysis so i'm going to mark this and i'm going to call this equation 1 this is going to call equation 2. So now I am going to do analysis of materials. So the trick to do this is to first identify how many elements we have or chunks. I am using the word elements because that is roughly what a finite element program will do. So and the idea is in this case we have three pieces. Okay, What are the three pieces or elements or chunks? 
what are they i have db bd and ce or uniaxially loaded elastic bodies and our formula for that roughly looks like delta u equal to f delta l over ae and i and we'll have to use this that is my that's what elastic bodies mean and it has this statement is equivalent to this equation okay and in fact i'm going to say very specifically it's a linear elastic body so this statement is equal to that equation so that's that's all we're going to do and then part abc is a rigid body what this will do is this will constrain the motion and we will see that when we do the constraint analysis okay so let's see what this means now i'm going to draw what is called a displacement diagram this is very critical okay so displacement diagram is uh, is what enables us to do the rest of the calculations without having to worry about which things move which way so our displacement diagram I'm going to draw all the critical points. There's P. I'm going to draw this bar. Sorry, I'm going to draw this a little bit lower so that we can. I'm going to draw this a little bit lower so that we can actually see these things. There it is. Okay, point P. Uh, this is point A. Sorry, this is point B. That's point C. There's point D. and there's sorry there's point d and there's point e so and notice our notation our notation u x and y are like that so key point is i'm going to draw displacements along the axis or positive that's our assumption in other words assume all displacements or along the positive axis blindly okay we don't care whether they're actually going to be downwards or upwards but we're just going to assume in this case positive axis is downwards nothing is happening here so positive axis is downwards so we're going to assume all displacements are downwards okay in reality some of them will be upwards and then we'll worry about that by using the algebra and we'll get negative answers so that's not a big deal so i'm going to put u a here and that we know is 0.35 mm u b is going to be like that u c is going to be like that blindly i don't really care whether it's actually going to be that way or not u d is 0 and then u e is 0 okay this is my displacement diagram and my actual body is here so i'll draw the body so that we can all see what is what so the body is here right so that's my displacement diagram once i have my displacement diagram i can now write my various equations which say now comes the next thing i'm going to use delta u equal to f delta l over a e okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go from so delta l is positive if we go in the same direction 
as the axis. Delta L is negative if we go in the opposite direction as the axis. So let us see what do we mean? I'm going to write u b minus u d that is delta u b d that's this guy equals f b d that's the force in the b d bar times delta l b d divided by um, sorry I should, have, I should have been a little bit more careful I'm going to write this a little bit more carefully because we are going from D from from D to B okay that's why I got U B minus U D okay equals delta U B D or D B Apologies for that, but I'll do, I'll do it properly. Delta U DB equal to F DB Delta L DB divided by E DB A DB. Okay, now this one D to B d to b is positive so i don't even think about it i'm just going to use the positive sense for d to b because i'm going along the axis can you see that if i'm going along the axis i'll get this is remember f d b from equation one use equation one which is this guy Equation 1 tells me F, B, D, F, B, B. By the way, forces, it doesn't matter whether you write D, B or B, D. None of the ones other than length. So the only thing for which you have to a priori decide or you have to decide which way the signs are are for the lengths. All the others, we automatically just blindly assume. Okay. So what happens is, I will get, this is 14 over 9P times delta L, D, B. Delta L, D, B is given as um, uh, the length of this thing is 225 so 225 remember it's plus 225 because you are going in the same direction of the axis EDB is 105 times 10 to the 3 mega Pascal notice units are mega Pascal Newtons and millimeters we have talked about this many times so please remember that times 240 mm is the cross-sectional area that is given to us millimeters square Okay, so this gives me P over 72,000 if you do the calculation. So that's delta UDB, that is UB minus UD. We know U, UD is 0, so UB, so I got UB equal to P over 72,000. This is equation 3. Now, let's do the next one. Now, before I do it, I want you to try and do it. Write the one for CE. So, pause the video. You try it. So, I'm going from um, E to C. Okay. That means it will be UC minus UE and UE is 0 equal to F. Um, EC delta L EC divided by E EC A EC. Let's see if you can do the values. Okay. So pause it, try it out, come back and see if you got the same signs as I did. Good. Did you pause it? Did you try it out? Now I'll show you what I get. This is first thing is UEC is FCE is 5 over 9P. So I'm going to substitute that. 
5 over 9p from equation 2 Now delta L E C. Now remember our we are going from E to C which is opposite the direction of our axis. Our axis was going down right. So E to C will be negative. So I am going to write this as minus and this is very very important. So it is minus 150 mm divided by E was given as 72 times 10 to the 3. times 300 mm okay so this is because we are going against the axis nothing else matters this is the only thing that matters so what happens is uc will be turns out to be minus p over 259200 okay so how come does it make sense that uc is negative so let us see if it does so notice which way is uc pointing can you see uc is pointing downwards Right? What it's telling us is that the actual UC will be upwards, which makes sense because this will get longer because it's pulling, right? So it will work out okay. But you don't have to anticipate the signs. Everything will work out. The only sign for which you have to anticipate is for L to figure out whether you're going along the axis or perpendicular to the axis. That's not a big deal. Okay. So now we are ready. So we have written this is the second, this is the what equation is this? 3, this is equation 4. I wrote this in red because I want to see that in this particular case, the, the number comes out to be negative. Okay. Now, the last one we are going to do is the constraint or compatibility analysis. Which says that I need to figure out that bar ABC is rigid and our for small deformations this turns out to be a very simple thing so for small deformations this will turn out to be a very easy result because we have a nice picture remember our displacement picture ua ub uc this is my picture right so i'm going to draw this line here and i'm going to draw this line there right that's my similar triangle so this height will be ua minus uc this height is ub minus uc this length is 225 this length is 125 notice that because i have chosen all the directions to be the same way it is easy to do this calculation that's the main advantage okay so the point about doing all these vectors downwards and all that is that our compatibility calculations are easy this is usually the hardest part because that requires trigonometry. In this case, for every problem with this, it will look the same. Looks like this. So, by similar triangles, you will get uh, UA minus UC divided by 350 must be equal to UB minus UC divided by 225 right so I am using these two similar triangles this guy and this that's the other similar triangle right and so if I do those two similar triangles then I'll get this result 
and now I simply substitute. So this I am going to substitute from equation 5 was it equation 5 sorry equation 4 and this is equation 3 equation 3 is this ub is p over 72000 equation 4 is uc is minus p over 259200 I am going to substitute those two things and I will get 0 0.35 plus p over 259200 divided by 350 this is ua this is u minus uc equals p over 259200 sorry Seventy two thousand minus P over two five nine two zero zero. This is U B, this is U C divided by two twenty five. Hey, it's an equation that's easy to solve. If you solve this, you will get P equals fourteen point seven three kilonewtons. Okay, that's how it works. Thank you.